Hello, and welcome to Data Over City Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Manish Sood, the CEO, founder, and chairman of Reltio. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is my career in data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To help keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Now, today we are joined by Manish Sood, the CEO, founder, and chairman of Reltio. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but your bio is what we are here to talk about. Manish, hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. It's great to be on the show. Thank you for having me here. Oh, thanks so much for joining us. So tell me, okay, so you're the CEO, the founder, and the chairman of Reltio. What is Reltio? And what is it, what's this company that you've built and what is it that you do? So Shannon, uh, Reltio is focused on uh, unifying core data in real time across the enterprise. And, uh, you know, with this core data, when you think about uh, uh, data domains like customer information, product information, or uh, supplier type of information, most of the businesses run on this kind of information. Right? This is core and central to their operations, where they want to drive growth, where they want to optimize costs. And uh, most of the companies today have a highly complicated ecosystem of different applications that fragment and silo the data. And hence, it becomes one of the biggest friction points in the enterprise for companies to be able to execute well. And that's where uh, Reltio comes in, where we are able to provide the product capabilities that would allow customers to manage data as a product and leverage it across every touch point, across every business process, across uh, every application uh, or insight that they're trying to get to. I love it. So very cool stuff. Um, So... You have many titles as the CEO, founder, and chairman, but let's talk about the, as CEO, CEO of the company, and we'll get to the, you know, the foundation of it here in a bit, but um, what is it that you do? What's it, what is your day-to-day in, in the company? Uh, so as a CEO, my day-to-day in the company is essentially uh, driving the strategy, um, making sure that uh, uh, we're driving and defining the right culture that we want to grow and scale with and uh, focusing on uh, operations uh, so that across all parts of the business, we are able to move in lockstep and uh, get to the the targets and the results that we all desire to achieve uh, through the course of the year and as well as uh, as a part of our long-term strategy. Very nice. So tell me, Manish, when you were very young, before you even started school, did you dream, I'm going to start a company uh, that manages data? Or what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, I, I never, I never as, as I was growing up, I never thought of uh, being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. or uh, leading a company. Uh, and, uh, you know, through different parts of uh, my uh, career, you know, or uh, let's say when I was in school, uh, I was I was interested in tinkering with stuff, uh, you know, creating things, building things. Uh, and uh, what I found uh, interesting was uh, that uh, through through those early formative years, as well as uh, you know, in college, my first job out of college, data became more and more interesting. And uh, you know, sort of tangible part of what you can touch and feel and work with as a part of your day-to-day business. Because if you have to 
think about uh, driving go-to-market strategy. You have to think about what is the size of the market. You know, you have to look at data that tells you some of that information. So there is a lot of information gathering, you know, just using that as an example, and then thinking about what are the signals that you can read out of it. So it wasn't something that I dreamt of early on when I was growing up, but uh, it certainly became a part of everything that we did and uh, tried to learn along the way where it became very clear uh, that uh, data was going to play a major part or a role uh, in, in my career. So what did you study in school? What was the passion you were following there? Yeah. So uh, I studied as an engineer and uh, as a mechanical engineering uh, student. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, uh, <clears throat> when I graduated, um, I went and worked in an area that was uh, all about uh, managing uh, power generation uh, type of uh, units and machinery and automation uh, type of capabilities for large power plants. And, uh, you know, that experience, again, a lot of the automation work was, first of all, gave me access to, you know, our, uh, the ability to work with software, because automation, as you can imagine, was tied to software engineering types of work that was associated with it. But at the same time, you know, the critical components that had to be monitored or automated, a lot of it brought us back to data. And uh, that, that uh, sort of started to form this thread of data in that entire journey. Sure, sure. So where did you go from there? So uh, from there, uh, you know, I, I got more interested in uh, understanding some of the systems uh, behind, behind the business and uh, got exposure to working uh, on uh, uh, a multi-country type of an integration uh, for business. We, uh, you know, were a part of a larger conglomerate um, and uh, I was working in their India operations, trying to integrate it back to uh, the, the mothership in Japan, where the larger uh, entity was. And, uh, you know, those types of uh, cross-country type of uh, projects gave me more exposure to why some of the systems needed to be integrated. Because you know, if you're a large global business, you are always trying to figure out what is the total global footprint, how much business do we do across geographies, which markets are performing well, which markets are not, or based on the market opportunity, what is the type of investment we should be making in those new markets. And uh, that, that, again, sort of uh, thematically brought uh, me back to understanding uh, of the systems that were in place and why they needed to be integrated. And by the way, data was sort of, again, a common part of that fabric in this. And then, um, you know, as I was working on that, I got an opportunity uh, to move to the US uh, as a part of my work. And uh, there, uh, you know, being uh, in the Silicon Valley, I got exposed to some of the, the newer things that uh, other companies were doing. Uh, there was a lot of innovation going on. There was a lot of interest in creating new types of products and capabilities uh, across a wide variety of sectors. And uh, just seeing that innovation, uh, you know, I sort of uh, gravitated towards uh, an early stage startup where... Mm -hmm. All the work that I had done in the past, when I heard their pitch, I was, uh, you know, thinking out loud and saying to them, this is exactly the type of solution that would have been, you know, useful for all the places I have been in my past. Mm. And, uh, you know, guess what, what the theme was? Huh. Data. Huh. Again, <laughs> bringing, bringing that data together. Uh, and, uh, you know, because uh, I had worked by that point in time, I had worked in large industrial organizations. I mm -hmm. had worked in telecom industry. If you think about telecom industry, all the way from the front office to the back office, the systems need to be integrated so that you can have automated order flow and provisioning and then billing, all of those types of things happening seamlessly. 
But all of this required that there was seamless connectivity between the systems, as well as the data flowing across easily so that you could have that end-to-end -end flow. And uh, you know, after living through those experiences, uh, looking for, are there better ways of streamlining these processes? Because mm -hmm. the number of applications or the number of different systems that number, you know, th there was there was some thinking going on in the market in the early 2000s, where some companies, large enterprise software companies, whether it is SAP, Oracle, IBM, they all sort of came, uh, you know, and said that if you had end-to-end -end our capabilities from us, then you would not need to integrate all these systems. Right? Mm -hmm. It would it would all be solved because it all sits inside one single system. But those visions didn't pan out, and uh, most of the businesses went after a best of breed type of application landscape, and uh, you know that sort of multiplied uh, the complexity of the enterprise landscape, where you have more systems, more applications, more third-party data sources than ever before. So you know, since the early two thousands, I've seen this complexity grow. And, uh, you know, by the time um, we were around the 2011 type of a time frame, I decided that uh, this complexity was not shrinking. Uh, the current systems were not necessarily able to handle where the future was headed. So it needed a complete rethink of what types of solutions would really solve the problem for the customers and bring, bring the data together in a useful manner for these organizations to accelerate their ability to do business. So that's that's been you know a little bit of the journey that I've been on uh, through my career and uh, how at every corner, at every step of the way, it has somehow led me back to data as the core central theme in, in all of these conversations. That's amazing. And so, before we get to to kind of the next phase, which is which is Reltio, you know, you talk a lot about uh, things that you started working with, the different software and uh, different applications. And so, you know, outside of school, were you self-taught? Where did you go? How did you, you know, were you just following a passion? Where where were you going to learn and uh, and grow yourself? Um, I, I think uh, the, the two, two ways to think about it is one is, uh, yes, uh, you know, areas that you're passionate about or find more interesting, those often, you know, tend to gravitate or you tend to gravitate more towards. And for me, data was certainly one of those areas. The second thing, you know, uh, I go back to the tinkering or, uh, you know, being able to shape things. And uh, this is where uh, rather than just uh, abstract uh, software uh, type of constructs, I found data as a more tangible thing to work with because you could really see the output of, uh, you know, whatever you were working on in the shape and form of the resulting data that, that would come out of it. So, so that, that gave me something more tangible to work with. And then the third thing that uh, I've always thought of uh, in terms of the guiding spirit for uh, my career is where are the secular trends headed? Uh, you know, are, are, you, are you picking something up and getting passionate about something that is also informed by a set of secular trends? Or is it is it something you know you're doing just because you're passionate about it, but there's necessarily no market or opportunity associated with it? Uh, so the secular trends in this case, uh, every time uh, reinforce that uh, belief that data was going to be a strategic asset that everybody would have to think about and think about uh, in a different way than where we were before. And uh, that's the type of transition that I have seen throughout my career. And I'll just give you, you know, one, one simple way of thinking about it. Early in my career, you know, late 1990s, early 2000s, uh, 
the data professionals in a company or the the any kind of conversation that was taking place about data was at the lowest levels of the organization um, you know to the extent that in fact even the offices given to the data professionals were literally in the basement of the building and you're laughing about it, but I think yeah. you, you no, agree. I know. With... It's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and now data is being talked about in the boardroom at the C-suite level as the strategic endeavor mm -hmm. that people need to focus on and undertake. And I think this is, you know, at this point in time, this is one of the best points in time for anybody to be in a data career, right? Or be a data professional, because this is the time and age of data that we are in. So it's really exciting for me to have seen that transition yeah. and to be in a place where, you know, we're helping shape the thinking of what the future can be with data. That's very cool. So, so then let's talk then, you know, you found this customer need or this company need. And uh, so you decide to start your own company. I mean, that's not an easy decision. That's a big, that's a big deal. So, so tell me a bit about that and the starting of, of Reltio. Yeah. So I started Reltio in 2011 and uh, you know, again, I go back to the secular trends uh, mm -hmm the number or the, you know, think about the silos or fragmentation of data that was growing. And it was on an irreversible path because we have only seen the number of systems every company uses go up, not down. Uh, the second thing was uh, the whole focus on how businesses would need to be more digital in mm -hmm. nature. And when you think about, you know, digital experience that companies need to build or deliver, uh, or digital processes that they need to support. There is no one single out of the box application that is going to magically solve the digital experience problem. In fact, you have to build it on top of data that is you know, going to help drive that. So the third thing that came to the front with that was where would you build such systems? Because in a lot of cases, you would have digital experiences that would need to be exposed to partners, to internal employees, to contractors that you're working with, or customers that you're selling to. And digital experiences cannot sit just within your on-prem four wall because you won't be then able to expose it to the outside world. So cloud was the natural vehicle that it would have to ride and be built on. And 2011 was also the time when all of these things were becoming you know, focal themes uh, for every organization out there. And uh, I thought that uh, at that point in time, uh, this, if, if this is the direction that everybody's thinking about or focused on, then we will need a different set of capabilities to handle, manage, curate the information that is needed for these outcomes. And that led me to the, the starting of Reltio. Uh, you know, once you, once you get an idea stuck in your head and you can't stop thinking about it, even when you're sleeping, you're still thinking about solving the problem. Yes. You have to go do something about it. I love it. That is, that is fantastic. Uh, that's such a great story. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. And uh, so, um... I'm going to jump around a little bit here. So with that forward thing, since we're talking about that so much, you know, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Shannon, uh, the number of jobs working with data are going to increase. Uh, but I think uh, at the same time, 
what you're going to do with the data, right? Or what type of job it is going to be, it's going to improve and go higher up in terms of the sophistication. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, data is a new language. We all have to know and understand it. And as we learn more about the language, you go to the next level of the work that you can do with it. So I think a lot of the lower level work um, will get automated. So if it is just sheer data entry type of job, then automation capabilities can be put to use there, right? If somebody is reading things off of a printed form and then typing them in, those things can be automated now. And technology is getting better at that process automation. Um, or if you're just uh, you know, manually massaging some of the data, those types of things will get improved. But what that will also do is give the same people the ability to learn something more and go to the next level of that uh, hierarchy or uh, you know, the next step function where they will be able to apply their subject matter expertise in a more meaningful manner to the types of uh, jobs that need to be done. So, you know, I see jobs increasing, but also the quality or the type nature of the work that needs to be done, uh, you know, moving or graduating to some more subject matter expertise that has to be gained and applied uh, to solving these problems. Makes a lot of sense. So, um... What is your definition then of data? Uh, you know, how do you define it? Well, having worked with it for for so long now and, and starting a company around it, uh, what do you? How do you define it? That's a great question. We all talk about data. <laughs> <But> what <laughs> is what is data? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, you know at the end of the day, facts and numbers that help you make a decision. And uh, you know, in a lot of cases, when you start uh, dissecting that and start thinking about what are those details, facts, or um, you know, numbers, then even a simple question that will get asked in a business environment is: uh, Let's say it's a global organization, and uh, somebody in the C-suite level asks the question: How much business do we do with American Express across the globe, across all countries? across all lines of business, across all subsidiaries that they have. People scramble. They don't have a ready answer for it, right? Some facts are missing because you don't have the, the precise understanding of how many different types of customers do we have in the American Express global family of companies? And what does that family look like? Which accounts do we have there? Which ones we don't? And by the way, if we have different lines of products or lines of business, then which lines of business have sold to those different subsidiaries and uh, which ones have not? It just becomes a massive project to assemble all that information together and come up with that answer. And both numbers are lacking as well as you know some of the core facts are lacking both have to be put together uh and and that's that's the type of stuff that uh, i think gets in the way of getting to increasing the speed of your business everybody today you know uh, if you go ask any cio or ceo they all want to increase the clock speed of their business they all want to move faster but unless they get this right or the data right, you cannot. And that becomes the biggest friction point. So um, so how do you work with data at Reltio? I mean, not in terms of the software, but I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, on a day-to-day, -day, I know at Dataversity, the irony of what we do, right? Educating people in data and, and yeah. then we have to manage it ourselves for our own company, right? Yeah. You know, how, how do you work with it and, and what are some best practices there? So, um, you know, again, our, our core hypothesis is that you have to unify core data because number of silos or number of, uh, um, you know, systems that you have, that's not going to shrink. In fact, even our business, 
uh, we use 100 plus different applications to run our business every day. But we have to unify information out of it. We have to have a unique identifier for every customer that we work with. We have to know everything about that customer, how we are engaging across multiple touch points. What is our services team doing? What is our support team doing? Uh, what is going on in training? You know, what is our sales team doing? Because if it's an existing customer or a prospect, understanding all those dimensions round out our perspective. So we assemble those details together. In fact, we use Reltio as the capability inside Reltio to run our business, right? So we, we drink our own champagne and we look at that data as the starting point to inform our decision. And, uh, you know, that's something that uh, we take very seriously because, you know, what we go tell our customers is that unless you have high quality trusted information, you will not be able to make the right decisions. And uh, that is the same principle that we go by where we are able to think about, uh, you know, what do we need to do to grow faster or be more efficient or to meet compliance uh, type of uh, requirements. In all three of those cases, it comes back to the high quality trusted information for our customers, for our products, for our suppliers, for our employees. Uh, all of those details have to be improved on and continuously curated inside our own business. Uh, and I love that, that I, I love that phrase, we drink our own champagne. I've heard we eat our own dog food, but I, I much prefer drink our own champagne. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. So, you know, with this, uh, what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in data in, in any aspect? Yeah, um, that's a great question, Shannon, because I think, first of all, as I mentioned, the number of jobs in data are going to increase, right? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a new language that everybody has to understand and learn, uh, whether you're in finance or sales or, you know, IT, it doesn't really matter. Everybody, everybody needs to have a good understanding of how to work with data and data systems. And uh, that's something that uh, I would recommend, uh, you know, regardless of whether you go become a data professional or not, you should add it as a part of the tools in your toolkit that you will take to, you know, your career opportunity. Because even if you're in medicine, you know, think about the implications of software and, uh, you know, the type of work that can be done with AI ML in the field of medicine. But guess what the starting point for that would be data. data. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something that uh, everybody has to understand and especially, you know, what are the different ways in which you can have access to it? What are the, the tool sets that are available in the market? You don't have to be experts at every part of that toolkit. You just have to be aware of those tools because if you're working with uh, a team, then you would be able to guide them, direct them, or ask them questions in a manner that will get you get you to the right outcome uh, sooner. So um, you know, once again, this this has to be a key part of the the set of tools that, that uh, everybody has to be aware of and trained with. I appreciate that. That's great advice. So Manish, tell me if if somebody wanted to uh, learn more about Reltio and, and inquire about your product, how do they find you? So go to www.reltio.com. Uh, that's the best source of information. Uh, you will also see that we have a community uh, uh, at Reltio where uh, you can join that community. You can learn more about uh, how other customers are solving you know, these tough data problems, especially uh, for unification of uh, data across multiple systems and data silos uh, and how they're benefiting from it. Because Shannon, one of the other things that I've found lacking, you know, think about this. We always talk about if we have better data, we will have better outcomes. 
sounds sounds like a no brainer to all of us really? but when you go ask um, all of the data professionals how much value can you quantify how did it increase or how much did it increase your revenue or how many dollars did you save they don't have a good answer and and i think that's the part where uh, we have to do a better job as data professionals to guide customers or guide uh, your biz our business stakeholders on what the quantification of that value is and i think that's that's going to be one of the the big things to solve for and also um, you know help everybody with uh, that's going to be front and center um, especially in the given economic conditions i couldn't agree more and and that's so great that you have a community and and have made that a, a focal point and priority it's so important, especially I, I think in the data community. I, I've never seen such a, a greater need and and yep. and even desire to for a, for community. That's something that we work on and believe here at Dataversity as well. So, and you well, can you can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, happy to uh, you know talk to um, uh, any, anybody who has questions about what we do at Relfio, uh and help them with it. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, Manish, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.